Welcome to my office and my little library. It's the first week of April and this is happening outside and there's a worldwide pandemic going on and myself, like most of you, are in isolation trying to flatten the curve, trying not to be outside as much as possible or in contact with people as much as possible. So in this video, instead of doing something related to large format or working actually with the camera, I was going to take you through some books and some cookbooks and some technical books on large format photography and some films, some documentary films. So if you're sitting around home wondering what to do, I got a little reference for you guys today on uh, books to read, films to watch, and maybe food to cook. So if you're just getting started into large format photography, this is a great book by Kodak called The Book of Large Format Photography. It takes you through uh, basically everything you need from uh, developing film to camera movements. It's got the whole works in here. So if you can find this, this is a great little reference guide for you guys to have. Sinar created a series of great books. A friend of mine gave me these, Photo Know How, The Art of Large Format Photography, and The Large Format Handbook of the Sinar System. These are wonderful reference materials, and again, a lot of great, great information for you guys to go through. Steve Simmons made one of the very best books on using the view camera. If you can find this, on uh, eBay or else Amazon, or I think you can reach out to him himself. He might still have some copies as well. But this is a wonderful, wonderful guide on the creative guide to large format photography. Highly recommend this one as well. One of the nicer books on large format photography was by a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer named Jack DeKinga. It's called Large Format Nature Photography. This is a great, great book and he shoots uh, work down in the American Southwest and he uses the Arca Swiss field camera system and he goes through everything. He shoots a lot of color. This is a great book for you guys to get as well. One of my first books and one of my favorite books is Joel Meyerowitz called Cape Light. It was a book all shot on his Deerdorf 8x10 in the 80s and it's really wonderful. Here's a guy who carried around his camera all the time. You guys carry around a camera all the time, but he carried around an eight by 10 all the time and shot this. And this is a seminal body of work. One of my all time favorite books is by Bruce Davidson, the great Magnum photographer called East 100th Street. He went to Harlem in New York City in the 60s. Instead of trying to just sneak photographs or shoot street stuff with a Leica, he took a four x five view camera and uh, met all these people and did amazing portraits and amazing portraits of the place of the time. This is one of my favorite all time photography books. Anything by Sally Mann is good. Sally Mann, one of the great photographers of our time. I love her work. I love how she's taken large format photography and taken it to a new level. This is deep south, but every single one of her books is great. I've had the good fortune to see some of her shows in New York City, Washington DC. This past fall I was at Perry Photo and saw some of her prints up close and got to spend time with them and just amazing, amazing work. One of my all time favorite photographers. Anything by her is fantastic. Gregory Crudson, the artist who uses large format photography, 8x10 photography, sets everything up like movie sets. All this stuff is really, really interesting. All this stuff makes you think. Love all of his work. Richard Avedon, what can you say about the master? Probably the one of the greatest all-time photographers ever. I love this book. This book is called Made in France. And inside, you can see, not only you can see the photographs, but you can see the back of the photographs and what was written on the back of the photographs. The captions and what the art directors wrote. This is a collector's item, and this is one of my all-time favorite photography books as well. Mary Ellen Mark, can't go wrong with her. She was one of the most amazing photographers of the 20th century. I knew her personally. She was, she was an amazing, amazing woman. She shot all this work on the 20 by 24 Polaroid camera. Anything but Mary Ellen Mark is great as well. 
Simon Norfolk is a British photographer, photojournalist, and he shoots a lot of his work on 4x5. The book is on Afghanistan, but all of his work is really cutting edge, super interesting. Highly recommend anything you can get by him. Richard Rothman is a New York fine art photographer and produced this uh, book, Redwood Saw. Interesting work really gets into the lives of people. Love the tones on this. He is a great photographer, and again, high on my list of books to get. Mitch Epstein, love his work as well. This is actually called work. He has a whole host of books, and really anything by him is a great addition to your collection. Edward Bertinsky, Manufactured Landscape was his breakthrough book. Just an amazing, amazing piece of work. Shot it all on 4x5 with his Linhoff. He's gone on to become, of course, one of the world's great artists. But this book especially is uh, just an amazing, amazing piece of work. See if you can find that. This was a very important book for me. Alex Soth, Sleeping by the Mississippi really showed what people could do with an 8x10, getting into people's lives. Of course, he's a great Magnum photographer now. When this book came out, it really changed things for me to go and start using a large format camera as a photojournalist and not just as a landscape tool. This is a highly collectible first edition book and uh, one of my all-time favorite books as well. Stephen Shore, very famous photographer, went through North America in the 70s and photographed uncommon places. Really important piece of work. Uh, I love Stephen Shore's work. Evelyn Hofer, who shot a lot of stuff in the 60s with Master Technica, and she went on the road and she developed a lot of her own black and white film in her hotel room in a little tray. This is a fantastic book. I love anything that she does. This is a great companion to Richard Avedon's In the American West book, but it's by Laura Wilson, not shot on a large format camera, but a really great insight into Avedon working with his Deerdorf and In the American West. This I really, really recommend to see how a photographer works out in the field. Vanessa Winship, one of my all-time favorite photographers. This book is called She Dances on Jackson. She won the Cartier-Bresson Award and went through the States with large format camera. Printed beautifully, reproduction is beautiful. This is a great, great body of work. Joshua Dudley Greer, somewhere along the line, he went for 10 years with a large format camera and photographed the inner states of America. A lot of interesting pictures in here. The tones are wonderful, all in color. Highly recommend if you can find this book. It's new, so you should have no problem finding it right now. This will be a collectible for sure as well. One of the last books I'm gonna show you is a really tiny book. It's by Kurt Marcus, one of my all-time favorite photographers. It's called Dreaming Georgia. This is one of my all-time favorite books. Photographed in the American Southwest with uh, Linhoff 4x5 and on black and white. Printed in Japan, the Japanese know how to make such wonderful books. It's small and it, it's tiny, but I love holding it and looking at it. I love the paper. You can't find it anymore, but I think you can find it on eBay sometimes and sometimes on Amazon. Highly, highly worthwhile getting this book too. And speaking of books, I am lucky here in, I live in Calgary, and I'm super lucky because we have this place called The Camera Store, and they have brought in all of these great books, in part because I was kind of pushing them a lot to bring in great books. So they started this big library, and they have an amazing library of books that you can buy. Being in these tough times, I'm uh, one of the guys as well that's saying, help a local store out and shop local wherever you are in the world. We're all in this together. We gotta help each other out. Going on to cookbooks, this is a little tiny book called The Photographer's Cookbook that I love, and that is Weston's uh, Cabin. But there's all these great photographs. There is recipes by photographers on what to cook. Who doesn't want to eat Richard Avedon's The Royal Pot Roast? Really great little cookbook. I cook out of here quite a bit. And I love this book too. 
Beaumont's Kitchen, Beaumont Newhall, who is one of the preeminent photography historians. It has the most beautiful reproductions. And if you can see, they're almost like little prints that they come out. A lot of great recipes in here. I cook uh, quite a bit. And do you know, he's got a great bread recipe. Beaumont cooked bread almost every single day. If you're into looking for some reading material, a couple great autobiographies is Ansel Adams' autobiography, of course, on one of the masters who took large format photography to a whole new height. Sally Mann's autobiography, which, you know, all of her work, like I said, I love. This is great insight into her life. Group F64, this was all about Adams and Weston, all those great photographers of the time in California and getting together and going out and creating work, really how they started photography as an art form. This is a really, really great book to get. In a book that I'm reading right now and I'm almost done, Avedon, something personal, a look into his life. I don't know if I really uh, believe the tone of this whole book, but it is interesting to see into the life of this master photographer. If you're into documentaries, Salt on Murray Fredericks takes his 8x10 large format camera into the outback of Australia, into the Salt Flats. Interesting to watch how he works. What Remains, again, another Sally Mann story, an insight into her life. Uh, a great way to see how she works and how, sh how she thinks. This was a great little piece that I picked up in a bin somewhere. It was called American Horizons on Art Sinsenbach. He was a large format photographer that photographed everything with a large banquet camera. So that's a great piece. Line of Beauty and Grace by Jock Sturgis. Good insight into the artist's life. George Tice, Seeing Beyond the Moment. It was a look into how he works and, and how he prints. This is a great documentary if you can find. And for some entertainment, although it's not large format, always good to go with blow up. So as we all sit home in this crazy time trying to flatten the curve, here's some ideas for films to watch, books to read, food to cook. Don't forget to subscribe, hit a like, leave me a comment, leave me your own favorite book or favorite film on large format photography. See you next time. Cheers.